Thank you. Uh, I'm glad uh, I'm here uh, to give the talk in the morning. I just uh, landed from California because it's afternoon. I think I'm going to sleep. Uh, nine hours time change. Um, so uh, very glad to be here at uh, MicroLED Connect. Uh, I'm uh, the director of XR engineering at Google in uh, Mountain View. I'm also, uh, I was also the SPAE president, the, the International Society for Optics and Photonics last year. Uh, so I have these two hats and this allows me to talk a little bit more uh, about uh, other technologies than what I would be do if I would only have one uh, Google hat. So today, uh, and uh, my, my colleague from Yol already uh, 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 painted a, a, a great uh, uh, picture of the AR VR uh, market. So um, uh, my job will be easy, easier a little bit. Um, I will talk about um, smart glass displays especially the display, not so much the imaging part or the sensor part, but the display, uh, and how the transition uh, from LCOS to MicroLED uh, is happening today and what will happen beyond. Okay, so uh, we already talked about the AR VR uh, winter. Uh, that's uh, something that, uh, you know, is happening. Uh, uh, AR VR device shipments dropped 28% uh, uh, year over year, but of course, the future is bright, uh, and uh, VR AR uh, headset demand sets to surge uh, on AI, especially lower costs. IDC is one of the main uh, uh, market um, uh, market analysts. Um, uh, XR uh, wearables are all uh, also predicted to grow next year thanks to integration of more AI. So we're going to talk about AI and how AI is integrated in a smart glasses and what does it mean. There are no killer apps really. It's a use case, and I have a little uh, video to, to show you this. What happened in the past decade, and I started to work at, on Google Glass in 2011, that's already 13 years ago. Um, and um, every year I ask, I ask the same question. How many people wear smart glasses in the audience? Please uh, raise, your, raise your hand. Okay. And I repeat, we're in 2024, not 2012. Okay, so what happened? Well, we kind of uh, very uh, confu we, we confuse very much the uh, consumer market with uh, acronyms, products, product categories, very complicated uh, devices that had a very good echo with industry, enterprise, and defense, think about the $22 billion contract uh, between uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft HoloLens and the Army. But we've really confused the consumer between AR, VR, MR, XR, smart glasses, smart eyewear, contextual glasses, video see-through, optical see-through. You need to make things simple for consumers. And finally, I think finally we arrived in 2024 at a place where the consumer has a good idea, good grasp of what uh, a wearable uh, device uh, with display could be. Well, this year and uh, the previous years, uh, consumers had uh, access to uh, devices such as the um, MetaQuest 1, 2, 3, and then this year the AVP, although it's a little, little expensive, which defines a category, uh, a category which is spatial computing headset. On the other side, you have the smart glasses. There's nothing else. These are the two categories. So, VST, video see-through uh, headsets, or spatial computing uh, devices, or XR devices, as uh, uh, a few of us are still uh, uh, um, uh, define it, is all about the digital experience. Prescription lens integration is a good thing to have. It's an it's a insert, right? But there's no use case when the display is off. So v VST headsets are all about digital experience. It is a consumer electronic product, period. Smart glasses, on the other side, are all about number one, fashion. That's number one. Number two, prescription vision integration. I haven't talked about the digital functionality. Number one is fashion. Number two is prescription integration. Number three, you have the digital, uh, the digital functionality. So it's very different 
from an XR device. 